Here we're going to be looking at a perpetual inventory system versus a periodic inventory system. And first we'll be looking at a side-by-side -side comparison here to look at the basic differences between these two different inventory systems. And then we'll look at a T-account analysis and how each of these systems works here. So for our example here, we're going to have some transactions here where we have beginning inventory a certain amount here and then from purchases for the period and then some sales for the period and then the ending inventory for the period period here. So first, looking at our perpetual inventory system, that provides a continuous record here of the balances in both the inventory account and the cost of goods sold account here. And with a periodic inventory system, de that determines the quantity of inventory on hand only periodically here or at the end of a period here. So first looking at our, making our side-by-side -side comparisons here and starting with our beginning inventory. Well, both of them have uh, an inventory account here. And in this case, we had the beginning inventory would have been debited for $1,200 and the same here for the product inventory system that would have had an inventory account beginning inventory debited for $1,200. But now we get into our purchases here, purchases for the period here. So with the perpetual inventory system, we have our inventory account. In this case, we had a, a, a debit amount here of $10,800 here to purchases for the period. So looking at this inventory account, all purchases and sales or issues here to the cost of goods go directly into the inventory account as they occur. So everything goes in and out of this inventory account here for the purchases and any um, uh, sales due to those those inventories. They, they go into this inventory account here. Now, and that's for the perpetual inventory system. Now with the periodic inventory system, we don't use an inventory account. Uh, we have a purchases account here for the period. And then we, in this case, it was $10,800 debited amount here for the purchases for the period. Now, let's look at this purchases account. All purchases of the inventory during the accounting period go into this purchases account here. And then, of course, we had our account payable. We bought them on accounts payable. That would have been accredited here for 10800 10, The same here for both, both both the periodic and the perpetual inventory system. Now with our sales here, this is where some differences come in here. Now looking first at a perpetual inventory system, we have our accounts receivable. That was for the total amount here of sales, 14, for, for the 14400 for the period. And then we would have credited or increased our sales here uh, for $14,400. Same here with the periodic inventory system. We had that same amount for our accounts receivable for the sa and for the sales here, the same deal here. Our, our deb a creditor increased our sales here by $14,400. But the difference comes in here is in how we, calc uh, how, how we record our cost of goods sold here. First, with our perpetual inventory system, we're going to have a cost of goods sold here. But with the periodic inventory system, there's no entry because our cost of goods sold is going to be calculated at the end of the period here. Whereas with the perpetual system, we continually calculate our cost of goods sold. So what is our cost of goods sold? The cost of goods sold is recorded at the time of each sale by debiting the cost of goods sold and crediting our inventory. So in this case, we had uh, uh, our inventory that we, uh, it was at $12 per unit here. And uh, that amounts to $7,200 that we sold here uh, out of the inventory. And then we would uh, debit or increase our cost of goods sold here for $7,200. And that was simply built based on the number of sales we had. So the per unit cost here for our inventory was $12, whereas our sales here were $24. Again, for the periodic inventory system, there was no entry here. That's done later here. Now let's look at the end of period for how we calculate our inventory here. Now with the perpetual inventory system, there's no entry here. Since we do it continuously up here, each time we make a sale, we calculate our cost of goods sold and recognize it here against the sales. Now with the periodic inventory system, uh, it, it's a little bit, it's not too complex, but it's a little bit more complex. And we're going to get into the details here when we look at it in the T-account form, but let's just go through our definitions here. So for periodic inventory system, we're going to recognize our cost of goods sold here at the end of the period here. So for our definitions here, uh, 
that you add the total of the purchases account at the end of the accounting period to the cost of the inventory on hand at the beginning of the period. This sum determines the total cost of goods available for sale during the period here. So that's our definition here. And to compute the cost of goods sold, the company then subtracts the ending inventory from the cost available for sale. So just for our example here, we had a beginning inventory of $1,200 and then purchases for the period here of $10,800. So that gives us $12,000 worth of goods that we have available here for sale. Then we take the ending inventory, that was a given here, we have an ending inventory of $4,800 and the difference, subtracting that here from the amount of available goods of $12,000 gives us a cost of goods sold here of $7,200. So that's really a balance amount here. So what we do here we would have credited our uh, or debited our uh, inventory account here for $4,800. That's the ending inventory and that was an, the actual amount that we have per account here. And then we would have debited or recognized our cost of goods sold of $7,200. That was the balancing amount that we came up with. And then we would have credited or reduced our purchases that we had for the period here of $10,800. And then we would also credit or reduce our begin the beginning inventory by that amount here of $1,200. So our debit Debits here equal our credits, and we're going to look at this and how, so it isn't quite so confusing. We'll look at it in a T account form and how we do that. So uh, next, we're going to look at uh, again and now analyze both of these base uh, through some basic T accounts. Now let's look at our perpetual inventory. Remember that provides a continuous record here of the balances in both the inventory account and our cost of goods sold account here. And what we're going to be working off are those transactions that we have for the period here. So first looking at our sales here. So we had sales of 14400 for the period here. So we go down and we credit or increase our sales revenue here on our income statement for 14400 And then they were sold on account here. So we debit or increase our accounts receivable here on a balance sheet for 14000 four hundred dollars. Now remember our accounts line up here. Here's our balance sheet accounts and here are our income statement accounts here. So uh, next we have to determine uh, the amount of inventory and the cost of goods sold that would be uh, charged against the sales here of fourteen thousand four hundred dollars. So starting with our perpetual inventory account here uh, let's look at where we got these numbers from here. So going back to our transactions, our beginning inventory, we had uh, $1,200 here uh, for the beginning inventory and then purchases for the period, there was $10,800 here. And then we have ending inventory here of $4,800. Well, when you're working with this perpetual inventory system, this ending inventory doesn't come into play. So let's go down and look at our, our inventory account here for the perpetual Inven our perpetual inventory account. So we would have debited that here for $1,200 for the beginning inventory account and then for the purchase for the period we'd also debit that or increase that for $10,800. So now uh, just looking at that here, the company records all purchases and sales or issues here of goods directly into this inventory account as they occur here. So the purchases of merchandise for resale or raw materials for production are debited to the inventory account here rather than to the purchases account here. So we're perpetual inventory system. We use this inventory account here. So the next thing here for our, our inventory, we have the sales here 14, for 14,400 and we have to determine how much inventory would be charged off against those sales and what the related cost of goods sold would be. So um, this is where we just calculated out here. We had 600 units that were sold and the cost for each of those units was $12. So that taking time multiplying that out you get $7,200 here and that would be for the amount of inventory that we're reducing here so we credit our inventory account here for $7,200 or reduce it here and then we go and debit or increase our cost of goods sold here by $7,200. Now remember this cost of goods sold is recorded at the time of each sale by debiting cost of goods sold and crediting inventory and then one last thing here we had our credit amount here to increase our accounts payable for $10,000 
$10,800 because we purchased those goods here on account uh, for the, the $10,000 worth of inventory that we purchased here. So remember here when you're using this perpetual inventory system you have to go out and you have to calculate the cost here based on a number of units you sold here and then you in this case you would reduce your perpetual inventory here uh, by that amount your account here reduce it by that amount and then you'd go and recognize here cost of goods sold here by that amount here now for a periodic inventory this is where you determine the quantity of inventory on hand only periodically or at the end of the period here and we're going to be working off these same transactions that we have here where we have some beginning inventory purchases for the period here sales for the period and then ending inventory this is where our periodic inventory comes into play here we're going to have ending inventory here of forty eight hundred dollars so first to record our sales here fourteen thousand four hundred dollars we credit or increase our sales revenue account here fourteen thousand four hundred on the income statement and then on our balance sheet we would have debited or, or increased our accounts receivable here for 14400 assuming they were all sold on account here. So the next thing we have to do is we have to determine the inventory, the cost of inventory that was used against the sales that were made here and that would determine the cost of goods sold here. So uh, first thing we have to do or let's look at uh, we set up this purchases account here for the inventory purchase during the period here for this periodic inventory system. So uh, this purchases account all the purchases of inventory during the accounting period are uh, assigned to this purchases account here. So in this case we had purchased uh, $10,800 worth of material here during the period or that we sold here. So we would have debited our purchases account and then uh, we'll go over here we just accredit our accounts payable since they were all purchased on accounts here. So what we do here to determine our uh, inventory costs is we take the purchases for the period here the ten thousand eight hundred dollars we made here we close it out or we credit at our purchase account here for ten thousand eight hundred dollars and then we move it up here into our periodic inventory here for ten thousand eight hundred dollars so what we're going to be doing here is we're going to take the beginning inventory plus the uh, purchases for the period and knowing the ending inventory where our balancing amount here is going to go to uh, the reducing uh, the amount that we reduce our inventory by. So let's look at our calculations here. We have the beginning inventory here of $1,200 plus the purchases for the period here of $10,800. Adding those two together we get the cost of goods available for sale for the uh, period here of $12,000. Now we would subtract out, we know what our ending inventory is, it's $4,800. We subtract that from the cost of goods available for sale and that gives us our cost of goods sold here for $7,200. So going over to our inventory account here, we'd credit our inventory account here for $7,200 and then we would be debiting or recognizing our cost of goods sold here for those sales of $7,200. Now just to uh, go back here to compute the cost of goods sold the company subtracts the ending inventory from the cost of goods available for sale here so that's how we calculated our cost of goods sold here so just remember here when using this periodic inventory system you uh, have to know what your beginning inventory is here you have to know what your ending inventory is and you have to know what the purchases are for the period here what they are so you take you would have recorded the purchases here for the period uh, by in this special purchases account here and then you would have closed them out here at the end of the period move it up to the periodic inventory here and knowing the uh, beginning and amount here and the purchases for the period and the ending inventory you can come up with the balancing amount here that goes into the inventory account.